Praise God. Praise God, one and all. Welcome to the City of David Weekly Bible Study. I pray that today has been a blessed day for you and that you have truly met the love and the grace and the mercy of God. On tonight, we are continuing our study of the book of Job. Job has richly blessed us in the first nine chapters of, of this wonderful book. And I believe God has a word for us on tonight. And so if you would just get uh, yourself in a position. I don't know about you, but I feel like God has a word for us on tonight. Amen. Amen. And so my prayer is that God has uh, removed and blocked anything that would try to come between you and this word on tonight. Amen. So Job chapter 10. Job chapter 10. If you find your way to Job chapter 10, you be in the right place at the right time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's give God a, a, a prayer and then we'll get right to our lesson on tonight. God, we say thank you and we adore you. We magnify you. We exalt you. God, we declare there is none like you. Look high, look low. Yet, God, we still found nobody greater than you. And so we thank you, God, for the giving us the blood, the blood, God. It is the blood that's keeping us from day to day. And because of you, God, it shall never lose its power. Speak right now, God. Pray right now, God, that you would liberate the minds of the believers. Preach right now, God, that you would free the heart of even a non-believer. And God, I ask right now that if your presence come, I declare, God, that we will love you more dearly and follow you more clearly. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so let's find a way to Job uh, chapter 10. I believe that God has a word for us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so if I had to title tonight, I want to title tonight, Hush Until You Have Healed. Hush Until You Have Healed. I think what this first nine books of Job teaches us is that you're going to have some hard times in life. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care because you come to church. I don't care because you wear white. I don't care because you all that. You're going to have some hard times. And it's very important that you don't lose your purpose nor your uh, God-given destiny in the moments that you're hurting. Amen. Because life and death is what? It's in the tongue. And the Bible teaches us that your tongue is like a sword. Amen. And so instead of tearing down, build up. But many times when we are hurting, we are dealing with our feelings. And feelings are temporary. Amen. And feelings are designed to give us information and not to make decisions. Amen. And so when you are in your feelings, it's okay. Amen. But use that information for your good. Amen. And so sometimes we got to learn because once you say certain things, you can't get it back. Amen. Somebody. Once you say certain things, I may forgive you, but I'll never forget. Amen. And so you got to be careful. And the reason I tell you that is because in the midst of all that Job is going through, every now and then he's beginning to just hush. And his so-called friends, amen, are forgetting to hush. Sometimes your presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, is a present. Say it again. Sometimes your present in my life is a present. Right? Let's go higher. Sometimes God's present in your life is the present. And so it's not in that moment for you to do nothing but just to be still and know that God is what? God is God. Amen? And so if you recall in chapter 9 last week, where we left off, Job is responding to his friend Bildad. Bildad did what Eliphaz did, and that was he tried to rebuke Job because in his mind, Job, you're going through something because you sin. 
You're not going through all this that you're going through because you've been blameless and holy and you fear God. You're going through something because you've been slow to repent to God. Amen. And so Job in chapter 9, he begins to reply to Bildad. Amen. And so this is the second time that Job did this. He did this with Eliphaz and he did this with Bildad. Can I just jump re 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 real quick in somebody's mix and let you know, sometimes you shouldn't even respond to what other people are saying about you in your situation. And I believe that Job in all of his goodness, he should not have been responding to his so-called friends. He should have been using that time to communicate with God. He should have been using that time to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Now watch this. He started off doing that. Because you recall that day, when that terrible day when he lost everything, when he lost his children and he lost his animals and he lost some of his servants. The Bible says that day he fell down in worship. And that's the day he declared the sin that y'all say sometimes inappropriately. What? Naked I came into this world. Naked I shall depart. Blessed be the name of what? The Lord. Right? But then when his friends get to talking to him, he's using his time to respond to his friends. Make sure you're using your time value. Amen? Make sure you're not wasting your time responding to people who can't what? Change your situation. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so now we're going to get to chapter 10. And I believe God has a word for us. Now you got to lock in. Amen. This is not one of those uh, lessons. This, these, this book is not one of those lessons that you can just take off. You got to lock in on every verse because at the end it's going to all make sense. Amen. So chapter 10, the text says in verse 1, Job is now, he is responding now. And I want you to know that he is trying to communicate his feelings. Job says, I loathe my very life. Verse 1, therefore I will give free reign to my complaint and speak out in the bitterness of my soul. In other words, Job is saying, my complaints are valid, and I'm not going to hold back my complaints. I'm going to let them loose. Amen? But I believe that you all pay attention when you come to church. I believe that you all just don't come to church to look cute. You pay attention. Well, isn't it ironically that we're reading this passage on tonight, but yet God already gave us a word on Sunday? Because what does the Bible say in Philippians 2, around about verse 14, that we talked about on last week? And that is, you can't just keep grumbling and mumbling about your situation. I-N-G means continuously. It's not that you can't cry out once, twice, three times even, right? But you just can't keep saying the same old stuff. And so, Job, you got to get yourself together. Verse 2 says, now I say to God, do not declare me guilty, but tell me what charges you have against me. Does it please you to oppress me, to spurn the work of your hands while you smile on the plans of the wicked? Here Job is having a woe is me type of party. You say, here I am going through all the hell that I'm going through, but yet you are smiling on those that are <laughs> those that are more wicked than I am. You can't judge everybody else's struggle. You got to worry about your own struggle. And when you're going through, that's the, that's the main thing I want to tell you. Worry about your own situation. Don't worry about how God is blessing me. Don't worry about how God is punishing me. When I'm in hell, I'm just trying to get out of hell. I'm not concerned about what's going on in your life. I'm trying to get out of hell that I may see the salvation of my God. The text says in verse 4, do you have eyes of flesh? Do you see as a mortal see? Job, no God, does not have eyes of the humans. He is God. He, he looks beyond what humans can look. But in his, in his moment of feelings, amen. He is allowing stuff to grapple his mind. Amen? He's allowing stuff that he knows is not the case affect him. He says in verse 5, Are your days like those of a mortal? Are your years like those of a strong man? Amen? The text says that you must search out my faults 
and probe after my sin. I want somebody to understand me tonight. God does not have to search out your sins. God knows all. He's omnipresent and he's omniscient. Amen. God knows all. He knows when you sin. He knows when you sin in front of us. He knows when you sin outside of us. He does not have to search. He knows your sin. So the text says that though you know that I am not guilty and that no one can rescue me from your hand, even in his moment of despair, Job is he's articulating the, the power that God possesses. Now he says in verse 8, your hands shaped me and made me. Now will you now turn and destroy me? God hands has shaped Job. God hands has made Job. And I'm here to tell you, God hands has made you. That's why we shout about Psalms 139 verse 14. And that is, I was wonderfully and fearfully made by who? By God. But just because God has made you and just because God has shaped you does not mean that you have done everything that God told you to do, right? Because the one thing God does not control is your free will. Amen? You were wonderfully made. I, I agree. You were fearfully made. I agree. But that does not mean you do everything God told you to do. Amen? So Job is saying, will you now turn and destroy me? And if God did turn and destroy uh, Job. Job couldn't really complain because the wages of sin is what? It's death. Amen. And the Bible teaches us that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God and our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. But his mercy. That's what you ought to be shouting about on tonight. But his mercy. The saints should say it like this. He looked beyond all my faults and he, and he saw my knees. Amen. Text says, remember that you molded me like clay. Will you now turn me to dust again? From dust we were created. That's why at a, a, in turn we say what? Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Text says, do you pour me out like milk and curl me like cheese? Clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. Verse 12. You gave me life and showed me kindness. And in your providence, washed over my spirit. In your providence, in your divinity, in your sovereignty, God, you have washed over my spirit. But, somebody say but. But this is what you concealed in your heart. And I know that this was in your mind. Conceal what, Job? Conceal these bad times? In other words, Job, are you saying, God, you have hidden these bad times from me and concealed them in your heart? Well, if God wants to do it, he's just in doing it. If God wants to take you through a storm, God is just in doing it. If God wants to take you in the fire, he's just in doing it. God does not have to... Uh, inform you or get your approval before he take you through the fire. But, but here's the shout. But he has sent us what? The Holy Spirit to discern the mysteries of the kingdom. It's some stuff you only gonna get through the Holy Spirit. You're not gonna get it through another human. You're not gonna get the inspiration or the revelation through another teacher. You only gonna get it through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Text says, if I sin, if, that's what some of us say, if I sin, if, we get so high and mighty, if I sin, we get so brand new, if I sin, no, you need to say, I have sin, amen, that's why we say, if you're not right, you ought not take communion, because you gotta go get right, and then come back, I have sin, repentance comes with what, the omission of sin, you got the first omit, right, that's part of the healing process to admit, right? Then you go through acceptance, and then later on we pray you get some growth. But you got to admit you got a problem. Amen? Text says, if I have sinned, you would be watching me and would not let my offense go unpunished. That's not true. 
If I am guilty, woe to me. Even if I am innocent, I cannot lift my head. For I am full of shame and drown in my affliction. Drown, drown, drown in my affliction. And I want you to understand, look at that word, drown in my affliction. You can't just blow by that. Drown in, can I be honest with you all? Every now and then I've been drowned in my affliction. And every now and then I've been drowned in my thoughts. And every now and then I've been drowned in my circumstance. And see, some of y'all looking cute and some of y'all watching online and you can't get excited because you don't understand what I just said. I said I've drowned in my affliction. I've drowned in my feelings. I've drowned in my thoughts. Let me just share this. Every now and then we hear tragically about someone who gets in the water and they drown and they drown to the point that there is no return. Amen. They transition from this life to the life beyond. Amen. I said I drown, but yet here I am sitting, standing right here before you. I said I drown in my feelings, but yet God has kept me. Am I talking to anybody who knows who's honest tonight? And every now and then you drown in your feelings. And every now and then you drown in your circumstance, but yet here you are still looking good, ready to give God the glory and the honor. Am I talking to anybody that's been sick and for real, for real, you were believing the report of the doctor to the point you almost gave up, you almost thought about checking out, you almost said this is getting too much for me, but yet here you are ready to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. I've, I've drowned, but yet here I am standing here giving God the glory and the honor and the praise. And so I want to encourage somebody that every now and then you might drown. Amen. I don't want you to think because pastor is pastor, you don't drown. No, every now and then you might drown. But in the midst of, of drowning, I need you to keep remembering the power of God. Amen. I, I need you to keep remembering the glory of God and, 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 and the love of God because, oh my God, I'm feeling right now. Didn't the Bible teaches us in Romans 8 nothing? Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And so if I'm drowning, I'm not going to be separated from the love of God. If I'm not drowning, I'm not going to be separated from the love of God. Some of y'all still missing it. You recall in Acts 28, the Bible says that they were on a ship and the ship was shipwrecked. And they was drowning out in the middle of that water. And the Bible says they could not find no life rafts. The Bible says, in fact, all they could find was broken up pieces of wood in the water. And what did Paul say? Paul says, just trust God. Jump off the boat, and if you can swim, swim. If you can't do nothing but backstroke, backstroke. If you can't do nothing but paddle, paddle. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Every now and then, you might go through some situations, baby, but you got to swim. You, you might have some hard times. But if you can't do nothing but just paddle, paddle. If you can't do nothing but tread, tread. If you can't do nothing but backstroke, backstroke. But believe that God. Believe that God is able. Amen. And so Joe, somebody should. Well, that's what Joe's friend should have told him. Joe, you drowning right now, man. But keep on backstroke. You drowning right now, Joe. But keep on treading. I was sent tonight to just whisper in somebody's ear, keep on treading, man. Keep on treading, sister. Don't give up. Just hang in there and know however you got to get through the storm. You got to get through the storm. And what I need you to understand is that when you read Acts 28, the Bible says every last one of them that had the audacity to trust God and trust the words through his prophet Paul got in the war and they made it to the other side. Amen? And so when you drown, just keep on swimming. Amen? Don't let the water get you. You get the water. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now the text says, watch this, the text says, verse 16, if I held my head high, 
Amen. You stalk me like a lion. And again, display your awesome power against me. Job is getting, he's, he's getting his, he's getting his sense now. If I head my hell, my head high, you stalk me like a lion and again display your awesome power against me. You bring new witnesses against me and increase your anger toward me. You force, your forces come against me wave upon wave. Can I translate that for somebody? What Job is saying, if I get brand new, if I get too big for my bridges, somebody find your way to James 4. Get to around about verse 10. James 4. Round about verse 10. When you find that, what does your Bible say? Your Bible says that if you humble yourself, then God will what? He will exalt you. But if you take God's job and try to exalt yourself, the Bible says that he will humble you. And so what Job is telling us and teaching us is that you can't lift your head too high. That's why when you come in church, don't lift your head too high and be looking down at all the rest of us. Every now and then, you better bring your head down too because you falling short of the glory of God. And if you keep your head up too high, somebody, one of us just going to keep whispering in your ear, James 4 and 10, baby. James 4 and 10, keep, 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 keep lifting your head high and watch God humble you. Bring it all the way down. Amen? Text says you bring new witnesses against me. Notice when you read the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch says you couldn't really dry stitch on me unless you had two or three witnesses. Amen? That's why when you got a problem with somebody, they say you ought to go gather two or three like-minded individuals. And what Job is saying is even when these witnesses go away, you bring some more. You bring some more. You, you, you're not running out of witnesses that are testifying against me. He says, why then did you bring me out of the womb? See, Joe, see, sometimes when you're going through something, man, <laughs> see, some of y'all don't even know how blessed you are. You, you have no idea. You, you wake up in the morning and you complain about, <laughs> you complain about what to wear. You complain about the traffic, even though you haven't even hit the road yet. You complain about what's going on in the, in, the, in the temperature, in the atmosphere, or the hemisphere. Sometimes you need to just give God the glory for waking up. Amen. Watch this. And waking up in your right mind. I'm going to say that again to somebody. Every now and then, you need to pause right where you are and give God the glory that you still woke up in your right mind. You still knew your name. You still knew what day of the week it was. You still knew to cry out and to call out to God. You still knew that you was melon rich. You still knew every now and then you got to wake up that you can, because the enemy always is going to attack. What y'all say in the streets? Y'all say in the streets what? If you cut the head of the snake off, the body can't do nothing. And so that's what the enemy trying. The enemy trying to get your mind and get your head. Because if the enemy get your mind and get your head, worshiping God is not going to leave. That's why the church used to sing, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Because as long as you got your, oh my God, as long as you got your mind stayed on Jesus, Everything may not be going right, but you just keep praying to God. Everything may not be going all to the good, but you just keep praying to God and watch God help you not drown in the storm. He says, he says, he says, if I only have never come out the womb. He says, I wish I had died. Before any eye saw me. If only I had never come into being. Or had been carried straight from the womb to the grave. If, are not my days few almost over? Turn away from me. So I can have a moment's joy. It, it, it. If, if you've never been there, just keep on living. Because you're going to go through some stuff. So 
going to be the loss of a loved one. It's going to be sickness. You're going to go. It's going to be a relationship. You're going to go through some stuff that's going to try you on every side. And when, you, and when you're going through it, man, God going to seem millions of miles away. It's going to seem like your cry out is reaching everything and everybody's ears but God. What Job is saying in this moment, God, you seem so far away. And the enemy is playing tricks on Job because the enemy is speaking through Job and saying, God, turn away from me. That's the worst thing you could ever ask God for in your prayer. God, turn away from me. Even when you're doing wrong, I wouldn't pray, pray that prayer. I would say, God, keep your eye on the sparrow and keep your eye on me. God, I don't care. All others are crying out and calling out. God, I need you to keep your eye on me. Because as long as I know you have your eye on me, your invincibility and your omniscient teaches me and tells me that you can send angels to deal with exactly what I'm dealing with and going through. But Job, in this moment, he said, God, turn your, he said, God, if you turn your eyes away from me, I can get moments joy. Now, you can't get no joy if God turns his eyes on you. Amen. You can't, you, you need God. I don't know about some of y'all, some of y'all are real holy. But I need God eyes on me every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year of my life. I need God eyes on me. Amen? Texas, Texas, before I go to the place of no return, to the land of gloom and utter darkness, to the land of what? The deepest night, a utter darkness and disorder, where even the light is like darkness. Where even the light is like darkness. Now, earlier in chapter one, y'all y'all read in your Bible what Job was blameless, he was upright, and he always feared God. Right? Now the New Testament teaches us that Jesus is what? The light of the world. I don't care how dark it gets in your life. <laughs> I don't care how much you surround yourself with darkness. Jesus' light can never be consumed by all the darkness in creation. Yeah, somebody shout. Somebody missing it, right? I, I believe somebody did this. Jesus' light. I don't care what. I don't care. That's why the psalmist says, if I find myself in the pit of hell, I've learned that you're right here by me. Because light, amen, Jesus' light. Jesus' light can shine in any darkness. That's why when you're going through, the one person you need to crown to is Jesus. Because his light cannot, see, human light can be, <laughs> some of y'all light is only good on certain days. Amen, somebody. And some of y'all life is only good in certain situations. Amen, somebody, Pastor. And some of y'all life is only good in the sanctuary. And so that's why when you're going through, I wouldn't call on people because you might be calling on somebody whose life is only good in certain situations, only in certain environments. Amen. Some of y'all life can only some of y'all life can only shine in the darkness. Y'all have those lights in your bathroom that only light up when it's dark. Amen. But when it's light, you can't really see it. But I'm telling you about Jesus' light. You can shine that light in any, any environment, any situation, any circumstance. You can shine it when it's bright outside. You can see it. You can shine it when it's pitch dark outside. You can see it. You can shine it when it's right before sunset, right before sundown. You, it does not matter. You can shine the light of Jesus in any what? Any situation, right? And so that's why when you're going through, I, I, I'm a pastor, I, I raise my hand, I'm, I'm sure enough, I'm the pastor. And I'm here to tell you, the first thing you need to cry out to is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. You need to cry out to Jesus because I may be sleeping good. I may be in REM sleeping, may not hear that phone ring. Amen. 
Amen. And I may not be near. Amen. I may be on a plane somewhere, but if you shout out, if you shout out to Jesus, in fact, I'm, I'm giving somebody a license right now to give God the glory. Can we have a praise break? Because you've been in some situations and you just shine and cried out to Jesus and Jesus showed up. Am I talking to anybody that's been dealing with some family drama and you cried out to Jesus? And Am I talking to a parent that had to shine the light of Jesus on some children, on some grandchildren? Am I talking to anybody who's been on a job and Negroes wouldn't leave you alone and you have to cry out the name of Jesus and you saw stuff shifting? Somebody got moved to another department and somebody brand new came into your department. Am I talking who's been at a church and it felt like you were surrounded by some hypocrites but you began to cry out and call on the name of Jesus and the light came through in the darkness. Would you open up your mouth tonight? Give God the glory and the honor and the praise. And so when you're going through, amen, learn to cry out to Jesus because his light will shine in darkness. Now we said the title of tonight is to hush before you hear. And I believe if Job would have just meditated, amen, some of the stuff he said in chapter 10, he would not have said. Amen. Some of the stuff he said in chapter 10, he would not have said. So I'm talking to somebody tonight. You got to hush huh, until you hear. Amen. Amen. Never trust yourself and never trust your condition while you hurt it. I'm going to say it again. Never trust yourself and never can tr trust your condition while you hurt. Well, preacher, if I can't trust myself and I can't trust my condition, what can I trust while I'm hurting? I'm glad you asked. J-E-S-U-S. J-E-S-U-S. Some of y'all say Yahweh. You better learn how to trust God and God alone while you are hurting and while you are going through because God is the only one that can bring you out and place your feet on solid ground. Amen? And so the text, watch this, that's so down. So now Job is shifting, right? He's crying out to God and he's crying out to answer to build that. So now we've had two of Job's friends pull up while he is going through the worst time of his life. And neither of them had full confidence in who he was. Amen? Some people don't have full confidence in who you are. I hate to tell you that. Amen? Let me say it a different way. Some people love you only because of the benefits you provide. Y'all don't want to hear that tonight. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Some people only love you in an agape way. Amen? And in an arrow's way, amen, somebody, right? Before Valentine's Day, let me help somebody, Sister Ashley. Some people only love you because of the benefits you provide. Amen? You don't believe me, uh, say no every now and then. Amen? You don't believe me, uh, be slow with that car come Monday. Amen. Amen. Pick the wrong restaurant on Monday. Amen. Amen. Don't buy the right gift on Monday. Amen. What happened to that? I love you. Right? But the benefits you provide. Right? The benefits you provide. And so when the benefits stop, the love stops. Amen. I, I'm ride or die because when I call you, you oftentimes take me out to eat. But when you lose your job and you had to go get a PPP loan, I don't even call you no more. Because that benefit of going out with you is no longer there. Amen? So now two of his friends have pulled up and noticed they had a meeting. They had a meeting. Well, y'all recall when we read, they had a meeting that our friend Joel is going through the worst time of his life. We got to go see him about it. They had a meeting. That means, they can't, that means this wasn't a uh, pre- this was premeditated. This was a spot. They met. And y'all come and this is what y'all tell. Y'all, okay. So now it's, it's two friends. Here come the third friend. Surely the third friend going to be different than the other two, right? He going to be the one to talk with some sins. He going to be the one that really wants you to come out. Amen? Surely, right? Surely. Text says, watch this. 
chapter 11, verse 1. And then so far, the name of thy, he replied, Are all these words to go unanswered? Is this talker to be vindicated? Are all these words you have just uttered, Job, will they go unanswered? He didn't even have enough decency to call him by his name. He says, is this talker? Who is the talker? Is this Job to be vindicated? That's how they really feel about you. Will your idle talk reduce others to silence? He said, Job, what you said don't even make sense. Will your idle talk make other people not even respond to you? Will no one rebuke you when you mock? You say to God, my beliefs are flawless and I am pure in your sight. Oh, how I wish that God would speak, that he would open his lips against you. That's what a friend says to another friend. I'm telling y'all, you better watch your friend circles. Amen? I don't know children, cattle, sheep, oxen, servants, and this is how you really feel about me? This is what you really think about me? You don't even want God to come and deliver me. You want God to come and be against me. What more? It's some people that see you down and they still want to keep you. And those are some of the same people y'all chase behind. Y'all don't want to talk real to me tonight. It's some people that y'all chasing behind that can't wait to kick you when you're down. Okay. Text says in verse 6, And disclose to you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom has two sides. Know this, God has even forgotten some of your sins. He said, God has even forgotten some of your sins. So he just already got in his mind, Job, you sin. He just got it in his mind, Job, you are not going through what you're going through because you blameless and upright, all that other stuff they will celebrate you about. You wrong as two left shoes and God need to come down and let you know this. That's what he's saying in the text. He says, God has even forgotten some of your sins. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, Zophar here, he sounds like Job is in total depravity. He sounds like Job is beyond transformation. Like Job is so far down that the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God can pick you back up. I'm talking to somebody tonight to let you know, don't let no preacher, don't let no so-called friend, don't let no so-called church folk tell you that you ever so down that the grace of God can pick you back up. That the love of God can pick you back up. Text says, that he says in verse 7, can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? Verse 8, they are higher than the heavens above. What can you do? They are deeper than the depths below. What can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth and wider than the sea. You just said, you just said, can God, and basically in, in so many words, what Zophar just said is, nothing is impossible for God. So if you can talk about the creation of God and how it far surpassed anything we've ever seen, what makes you think God can't raise me up? 
What makes you think God can't turn me around? What makes you think God can't exchange my sadness for joy? Amen? And what did we talk about Sunday? I'm, 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 I'm connected to Dawson tonight. What did we talk about Sunday? If you still living, if you still living, and God has shown the ability to raise up dead folk, <laughs> when you down, don't give up on God. When you're going through, don't give up on God. Amen? Don't let nobody tell you to give up on God. Amen? And notice, even people that's close to you are not going to support everything you're doing in this season of your life. Even people close to you, you're going to have to check. Amen? Either check them or stay away from them. Those are, those are your options. If you're not going to check them, you got to stay away from them. Let me go there. Let me go there. Because what you allow in your ear gate, we see through Job, going to eventually reach your heart. And out of the mouth comes what? The abundance of what? Right? And so you either got to check some people or you got to stay away from them. Those are the only two options. Amen? Don't say, when well, I'm so holy, I'm just going to. No, you need to check them or stay away from them because. Oh, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead tonight. I feel it. Spirits cannot be destroyed like energy. It can't. Study science. Pay attention in chemistry. You can't destroy the element of energy. And you can't destroy the element of a spirit. Spirits can only be transferred or gained. Amen? So let's all agree on that. You cannot destroy energy. So if I put negative energy in the room, it can't be destroyed. It's just going to linger. And it's going to linger to the point that it's either transferred or gained. Amen? So what did I just say? Negative energy get in the atmosphere. It's only going to jump to people that's open to it. Or it's just going to keep moving. But it's going to remain in the atmosphere. And if you allow people to keep speaking into your ear gate. You're just going to allow that energy to just remain till you get to a moment of vulnerability and then it's going to come in the dark. And then soon you're going to be doubting what's possible with God. Amen? That's why you just declare the, the wonders of God but yet you don't think God can raise me up. Text says, watch this. And now verse 10 it says, now if he comes along and confines you in prison, and convenes a court, who can oppose him? Surely he recognizes deceivers. And when he sees evil, does he not take no? Hmm. But the witless can no more become wise than a wild donkey's coat can be, can be born human. Yet if you devote your heart to him, and stretch out your hands to him. If you put away the sin that is in your hand. And allow no evil to dwell in your tent. Then free of fault. You will lift up your face. You will stand firm and without fear. I don't have a problem per se. With what Zophar is saying in those verses. Because many of that. I'm here to believe. Amen? My problem is, Zophar has no knowledge that Job has sinned any more than he has sinned, but yet you're talking to me as a sinner and portraying yourself as a saint. See, I'm here to tell the church, well, let me just put the church on note. I'm here to tell the church, I will best receive your rebuke if we're going to talk sinner to sinner. I'm going to put a block up if I ever feel your rebuke is a saint talking to a sinner. When I read my Bible that all of us have fallen short of the glory. Amen? So when we're going to be real up in this house, let's just be up front and say we're going to talk sinner to sinner. We're not talking saint to sinner. Amen? Let's, let's, let's kill that in 21. Amen? 22, we're going to talk sinner to sinner. By the grace of God. Amen. Text 
says, watch this. Now, you will, verse 16, you will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by. Life will be brighter than noonday, and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is, there it is, that's why you can't hear love when you're going through, there is hope. There is hope. What, what hope? Come on, let's break down faith, y'all. Faith is what? The substance of what? Things hopeful, the evidence of what you and I cannot see. Your Bible also teaches us in Hebrews that what? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So let's, train, let's do the inverse properly. Without hope, it's impossible. That's why everything may stray away from you, but don't lose hope in the power of God. And people may stray away and stop calling, but don't lose the hope of God. People may not come check on you, but don't lose your hope in God's ability to make a way out of no way and to do what only God can do. Keep your hope no matter how hard the situation might be because in due season, you will reap if you what? Not. Yes, Amen. You will reap if you. Now the text says, watch this. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. The B clause in verse 18. Verse 19. You will lie down with no one to make you afraid, and many will court your favor, and many will come to your rescue. But in the eyes of the wicked, no, but the eyes of the wicked will fail, and escape will elude them. Their hope will become a dying gasp. Y'all see what's going on here? That's, that's, that's the last verse in chapter 11. Y'all see what's going on here? And, and, you, my friend, and you've traveled a long way. Next week we'll talk about that because I want you to understand. They didn't travel just around the corner. They came from a long way. Y'all traveled a long way to meet me. And this is the best y'all can do is to oscillate your support of me. Amen. I'm not saying I want you to look beyond my faults and look beyond my wrongs. But at least give me a fair opportunity. Right? At least love me enough, right, to give me a fair shake about my situation. Because when I am, when I am going through, I don't need a so-called friend playing mind on me, right? I don't need you telling me in one verse God is able, the next verse he won't do it, the next verse he, he, he has all power, the next verse I will be living. That's, that's too much. It's too much. And some of us do that in the church. We don't allow others, Amen. To go through the hurt of life without trying to churchify them. Every now and then you don't have to have an answer. Every now and then you don't have to have a critique of my situation. Every now and then if you care about me and you love me, just pray for me. God, may your will be done in my brother or my sister's life. May you send angels, God, to deal with the situation. Every now and then, I don't need your, I don't need your judgment. I don't need to call yourself. See, I understand if I can get that from the end, but if you call yourself a friend, just pray for me. Be still. What, what is the Exodus 14 for? Be still. And let God fight this battle. Amen? Now, these are friends. Now, now, now guess what's going to happen? We're going to pick up at 12 next week. But y'all y'all see the pattern, right? Just guess what's happening. Job is going to spend more time responding to Zophar. Just like he did Eliphaz. And just like he did Bildad. Right? And, 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 I, and I'm going to close on this one tonight. I don't know who's going through. I don't know what you're going through. And I want 
you to understand, don't waste that most precious commodity called time. Use it wisely to make sure you are affirming who God is. I'm going to say that again. Use that time wisely making sure you first affirm Notice I said affirm who God is. See, many of us get to the what when we should begin at the who. Because if you deal with the who, you will take care of the what. Right? And so don't, don't, don't waste your time arguing, debating, trying to convince people that are convinced to misunderstand you. Let me say it again. Don't argue, don't wait, don't debate, trying to convince people that are committed to misunderstanding you. You let God, amen? You let God fight that battle. You, get, you let God, right? You handle God's business, he'll take care of your reputation. Amen? You make sure your character can be found in God and through God. He'll take care of what they said about you in these streets. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, put your best, put your hands together. Let's give God the glory on tonight. I thank, I thank God for giving us a word on tonight. And so hush, hush. Come on, y'all. Learn to hush. 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 I know you got a lot to say, but heal first. Heal. Heal. Don't trust yourself. Don't trust your situation while you're hurting. Heal. Amen. Who can I trust, Pastor? You can trust God. While you're hurting, trust God. Amen. And then God will give you what? A mouth and a wisdom. For the moment and for that season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. I pray that that was a blessing for you on tonight. I pray, I pray, I pray, because I believe that some of us got to get past the mumbling and the grumbling and the complaining, and we got to get ready to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen? Amen. On tonight, if you feel like God is leading you to join our church, on last Wednesday, somebody joined our church. On tonight, you can join our church. Amen. Last Sunday, folks joined our church. And so I would love for you to be a member here at the City of David. Just type hashtag all in and join this wonderful body of believers. We are not a perfect body, but we serve a perfect God. Amen. And if you keep praying for us, I declare we will get to the mark. Amen. 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 Begin to type on, the, on, on your screen the names that you want us to pray for on tonight. We have all the names that we know to pray for that's been uh, emailed or texted to us. And, and so we're praying for all the families who are or have walked through uh, the valley of the shadow of death. I'm praying for the Wilson and the Hicks family. My brother Keith, praying that God will strengthen you in this hour as you process the transition of your partner in life. Amen. Praying for the Johnson family still. Praying for the Hall family. I'm praying for Sister Pat Freeman, one of our members, as she processed uh, the transition of her beloved friend, amen, and partner in life. I'm praying for the Davis family and the Dixon family. Praying for Ronnie McClendon and family. Praying for the Moore family and the Martin family. Sister Martin had a praise report that her, 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 her affliction God is sending angels to deal with it. It's getting better and better. Amen. 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 Praise God. We're praying for the Bennett family and the Rogers family. Praying for the Gaines family. Praying for uh, the Benefield family and the Wells family. Praying for the Roseboro family. Praying for Sister Shante Ellis. Sister Eureka Young. Praying, praying for Pops Ross Johnson. Praying for Wendy Strong. Amen. Praying for Brother Marcelo Taylor and family. Praying for Bishop Young and Bishop Kirkland and Mother Jackie Martin. Praying for Sister Deborah Hall and the Hall family. Praying for Pastor Haynes. Praying for Victoria Green. Praying for Arlene Scott. 
praying for Paul Scott, praying for James Reed, praying for Cynthia Maxwell, praying for Sister Sabrina and the entire family, praying for Eugene McAdoo, praying for my father, David Fitzgerald Sr., praying for my uncle, Nate Robinson, praying for Emmanuel Coley and Paulina Brooks, praying for Brother Reginald Alexander, Brother Daryl May, praying for Mother Vera Harper, praying for uh, Mrs. Betty Sims, Miss Pamela Sims, and Lola, praying for Taisha Harvey and family, Kiasha Macklin and Shalane Johnson and Carolyn Johnson Willis and Al Johnson and Kent Stanberry and Ray May and Mar Marcette May, praying for Mother Esther Daniels, Mother Holly Frazier, Sister Barbara Loren, I'm praying right now for Brother Andrew Ireland, Dr. Karen Ireland, Dr. Tamai Johnson, Sister Kanita Lewis, Brother Melvin Lewis, praying for the mother of our church, Brother Alma Thomas, praying for Jerry Patton, let's call his name on tonight, praying for Fred Cheap, praying for Barbara Sparrell, praying for Latrice Berry, praying for John Downey and Walker Posey Jr., praying for the McCray family and the Wyndham family, Praying for Brother Richard Griffin and Brother Sammy Davis. Praying for Sister Wanda and Sister Kia and Baby Jason. Praying for Uncle Gus Briscoe, Imani Hayes and Veronica Hayes, Bootsy Briscoe. Praying for Ethel Fitzgerald. Praying for Booker T. Stanley. Praying for Eloise Tenner. Praying for all those who are fighting this virus. All those who have recovered according to the doctor's test from the virus, but still stuff is lingering. Lungs not acting like lungs should act. Pray and believe it in the power that God can totally restore health. Amen? Let us pray. Oh, merciful God, we come before you on tonight to give you glory, honor, and praise God, thanking you for just another week's journey. God, we lift up every name that we've cried out and called out on tonight. Um, Every name that was typed on the screen right now, we cover in our corporate prayers, God. Thank you that as you extend your arms, God, none of, none of us can escape your divinity and your sovereignty, God. And I pray, God, that you would continue to rain down on us, God, mercies and blessings and grace, God. We are so thankful, God, of the blood, the blood that reaches the highest mountain and it flows through the lowest valley. I pray right now, God, for those families that are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, God. We, as a prayer band, are tugging on the hem of your garment, God, asking that you would bless those families with everything they need, that they might make it through the other side, God, of the storm. I'm praying tonight, God, for everybody that feels like they are drowning with something. Praying and believing, God, that you would give us strength to keep on swimming, keep on treading, keep on backstroking, God, that we might not drown, but that we might make it through on the other side of the storm, God, and be upright to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And because, God, I believe, God, that we will make it on the other side, I'm just going to go ahead and praise you right now, God. I'm going to go ahead and give you glory right now, God. I'm going to magnify your name right now, God. Every circumstance and situation, God, I declare according to your word and Philippians 2, God, it must bow at the name of Jesus. And so to every situation of life, God, we declare the name of Jesus. Every family that is going through, we declare the name Jesus. Every individual going through, we declare the name of Jesus. Affliction of any type, we declare the name of Jesus, God. We know about the Delta, we know about the variants, but I know you to be the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, God. And so I'm going to praise you in advance, God. Nothing is too hard for you, God, and nothing will stop you, God. And no matter what comes our way, God, we going to be all right. We going to be all right because you, 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 God, you, you will take care of us, God. Be a hedge fence of protection 
around us, God. Till we meet again, keep us in perfect peace. Bless our homes, God. Bless the family and the circle of friends connected to us, God. And I believe, God, two or three of us will have a praise report, God, of how you showed up and showed out on our behalf. I praise you in advance, God. You are worthy from the rising of the sun to the very going down of the same. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. In Jesus' name, we offer this prayer. Amen, amen, and praise God. And so on tonight, if you feel led of the Spirit, just go ahead and type hashtag all in and join our church. Wednesday night is a good night to join God's church. I love you much, and I'll see you on this weekend. Before we go this weekend, we will be sending out the link. Please check your email. I want to see as many of you as possible on the line for our Two Can Walk Together conference on Saturday beginning at 10, and then come and worship with us on Sunday. I believe God has a word for us. Have a great night and a great week.